You are listening to episode 174 of the Peaceful Mind Podcast. Welcome to the Peaceful Mind Podcast, a place for creating the peace of mind you need to be the best mom you are created by God to be. If you want to bring more balance, more joy, and more peace to your motherhood, this is the place for you. I'm your host, Certified Life Coach and Catholic Mom, Danielle Tienel. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let's get started. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Peaceful Mind Podcast for Busy Moms. I'm your host, Danielle, and I'm thrilled you're joining me today as we welcome the beautiful summer season. Our conversation today is going to be about something that's very close to my heart, and that is nurturing our relationships amidst our busy life, in the midst of our busy life. I know that I have been focusing on summer because this is a big deal and a big change for my mamas, my clients. And you can see if you've been listening the last couple of weeks, I discussed on how you can have the best summer ever. And then the Next episode was having you save time, getting more done and achieving more of an electronic balance, especially as we're entering this time when the kids are not occupied with school. And today I want to put the spotlight on you nurturing your relationship in particular, strengthening the connection that you have with your spouse. I called it summer of love, strengthening, right? Strengthening the relationship with your spouse, because I want you to know that even though schedules are changed and different and you have the circumstances that your kids are maybe with you more than usual or not, or it's just, you know, there's more daylight hours that we still want this time to be able to focus on what's important to us and what is mo- more important than really taking this sanctity of marriage and building a strong marital relationship. And this is a subject that comes up a lot with my with my clients. Relationships is a huge part of what we coach on and what we we really Uh, help navigate the obstacles that can come when you are a mom and have children's and have daily tasks and so much to do. But we want to remember that divine order. We want to remember that it's God first, and then it's ourselves, and then it's our spouse, and then our children. That spouse relationship is so important. And so hopefully today, when you listen to this episode, uh, there's some takeaways that will help you, um, kind of strengthen your communication, maybe find some more quality time together, and just overall, just keep that spark alive, which is difficult sometimes when we are in a certain stage of motherhood. So overall, I just want to give you the message today that perhaps we don't want our relationship with our spouse to take a back seat, and maybe we don't want it to take a back seat at this time of year, because our brain loves to tell us that come the new school year or come the fall, then I'll focus on X, Y, and Z. And for something that's true. But as we know, our faith teaches us about the importance of maintaining and growing that special bond that we have with our spouses. So let's just talk about how we can start with strengthening communication because it is the lifeblood of any relationship. And it's especially crucial when we're juggling juggling so many responsibilities. So can you start to think about ways you can carve out a little bit of time each day to really connect with your spouse? And I'm not just talking about coordinating schedules or discussing household tasks, which I also say that This is fine too, that communicating over those things are wonderful, but kind of think about how you can connect in a way that is like asking them specifically about their day, maybe what's on their mind. What are they worrying about? What are they hoping that to achieve that day, the week for the summer? And also share yours. 
So give that communication of what you're thinking big picture. And I know that this isn't always easy, but even just a few minutes of an exchange of a conversation where you actually take the time to be caring and inquisitive about what's going on in their life. I know sometimes I'll just see my husband in like a deep thinking or there'll be that scowl on his brow and I'll be like, hey, you know, what's going on? What you thinking? And it just allows him to first bring consciousness, but to see that that I care. And I sometimes I just hear it. I don't have to offer if it's something like to need solved, but just hearing it. And I I feel connected when we do this. I do know that there's a friend of mine. She's a busy mom of three, just like I am. And she recently shared how her and her husband manage these kind of conversations. They started what they call their 10 minute connect. So each evening, once the kids are in bed, they sit together, just the two of them, uninterrupted. So there's not phones with them. Um, They try and put distractions away and they just talk for 10 minutes. And she told me it's been a game changer in keeping them connected amidst some chaos that's going on in their lives right now. So next, I want to talk to you about quality time. It's so easy to get up, to get caught up in the daily grind, and you forget that we're meant to actually enjoy each other's company. Did you know that? I hope that could be just the only golden nugget you you get from this episode today. I think it's to be that. Of course, we can remember before kids and when we were either before we were married or dating, like it was fun to be around each other. And it wasn't just expecting that this person's watching the kids and this person is, I don't know, taking out the garbage and all the the, the duties, but There was enjoyment of each other's company and your relationship was built on more than just the shared responsibilities that are taking place in your life right now. So rediscover those activities that you both enjoy. It could be a walk. My husband and I try and take a walk together after dinner each night, especially at this time of year. And I know that bringing up regular date nights. Some For some, they really like that idea and want that to be a goal. And I know that some moms, when we, they hear me say that, it brings on um, a little bit of anxiety in their thoughts of kind of self-deprecation that we don't do that at all. And so just kind of check in where you are with that. When I say maybe you instill a regular date night into your schedule in some form or fashion. Um, again, one of my clients, uh, let me know that they found the way I think she put it was, she was feeling more like a roommate than a married couple. And that's what she did. She instituted the weekly date night. Now I myself can honestly tell you my husband and I, well, actually more so nowadays that art by kids are getting older, but there was not that was not happening for us when the kids were small having weekly date nights. Now, we went on occasion and especially if it was like an anniversary or a birthday or something like that, but anyways, this particular client of mine, they instituted a weekly date night. And she told me sometimes it was a nice dinner out or sometimes it was literally just getting together like in the backyard after the kids have gone to bed. Um and you know, the activity, it it isn't as important as dedicated time to reconnect, but it for sure rekindled like part of their romance and the expecting and knowing that that's on the calendar, the looking forward to it. Um, yeah, so that's one way that I, as an example of maybe going and having that purpose of just enjoying each other's company, what would that look like? And let's also not forget the power of small gestures. Now, I know when I'm recording this, I'm kind of coming off of Mother's Day. And when this one is out, 
sort of, sort of st- strategy here on my part to talk about spouses when Father's Day is kind of coming up. So let's not forget the power of small gestures. We've got this, this day that is set out, set apart for our spouses for the Father's Day. So we can definitely do something then, but don't forget about all the other times when just something small can connect you to. Maybe that's a surprise note, a quick text to say, I love you. I know that my husband does that and I love it. Whenever it just lets me know that in the midst of his busy day, he was thinking about me and thinking about me enough to then take that gesture to text me and tell me that he loves me. And nothing can be a really warm, snuggly hug in my book. So can you just, when you connect at the end of the day, can you hug? And those little acts of of love, and I know that my love language, if you've read that love language book, I can't remember the author or quote that right now, but my love language is touch, which is why I'm always asking my my kids, can I have a hug and a kiss? And And those are a little bit more far and few in between um, with my girls off to college. And I have a 16-year-old boy, so say no more (laughs) about that. But these little acts of love, of these small gestures, they speak volumes about your care and commitment for each other. So hopefully I've brought up for you today just uh, a new consciousness around maybe strengthening the relationship with your spouse and making this a summer of love and connection. And I offered you uh, some examples and a little bit of strategy to be able to, to do that because ultimately strengthening your spousal connection in the midst of these busy days in your mom life is about intentionality. All things here The Peaceful Mind podcast is about directing our mind, our thoughts, our intentions, being deliberate by what we're choosing to do with our minds and our brains. And so making that conscious decision to nurture your spousal relationship, even when life gets hectic, that is what I um, am just bringing you today. And it's It's about remembering that you're not just parents, but you're partners. And in nurturing that bond, you not only find support and love, but you also model a healthy and loving relationship for your children. All right, everyone. So as we step into this summer I challenge you to create your own summer of love and look for ways to strengthen your connections with those that you love, to communicate with them more effectively and to spend quality time together and to show love in small ways. And then remember, always remember our faith guides us in this journey, reminding us that the sacred bond of marriage and family and the joy that comes from nurturing that bond. And absolutely, there's always more that we can do in nurturing our relationships. So don't forget to express gratitude, which can be so powerful. Thank your spouse for things that they do, big and small. It's easy to take these things for granted, especially when we're busy. And with that, I'm going to express my gratitude to you for listening, for being here, for trying these out, for letting me know how it is going for you. And as always, if this part is a struggle for you and a challenge, and it's something that you've tried before, and you really want help with strengthening the relationships in your life, there is no more most just passionate thing that I am wanting to give you, and that is helping you through coaching, the avenue of coaching. And I have a couple ways where you can work with me 
And so I invite you to sign up for a free call and then we can talk about it. Until next time, much peace and love to you all. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of the Peaceful Mind Podcast. Are you ready to take everything I teach you here and put it to work for your own life? To really learn how to have peace of mind no matter what is happening around you? If so, I'd love to have you as a client. As your coach, this is where you'll get personal and focused time on your own mind using life coaching tools, concepts, and proven life transforming wisdom, all through a faith filled lens. To learn more about how we can work together, come on over to DanielleTienel.com. There, you'll see how to sign up for a free coaching consult and learn how to get started. Until next time, peace be with you always.